6.1 perpendicular and angle bisectors. Uh, the essential question that we're looking at today is what conjectures can you make about a point on the perpendicular bisector of a segment and a point on the bisector of an angle. Um, what you're going to learn is going to be use perpendicular bisectors to find measures, use angle bisectors to find measures and distance relationships. We're also going to talk about writing equations for perpendicular bisectors. Core vocabulary is going to be equidistant, perpendicular bisector, and angle bisector. All right, first thing we're going to review is a perpendicular bisector. Um, if you have a perpendicular bisector, several things should come up um, to mind. The first one is obviously what this perpendicular means, or what it means to be perpendicular, which means the, the two lines, or line segments, are going to intersect at a 90 degree angle. Um, you also know that P is the midpoint, and you know that the distance from A to P is congruent to the distance from B to P. Okay, and it also just kind of FYI, um, it doesn't have to be a line, it could be a ray, it could be another segment. Um, that's a perpendicular bisector. In this case, I drew a line. So if you see this, if you see something, in this case, it's a line CP, is the perpendicular bisector of segment AB. Okay, you should know that they intersect at 90 degrees. This point, this intersection point, is the midpoint, and you know that this segment, AP, is congruent to segment BP. All right, next vocabulary word is equidistant, um, and it's a point is equidistant from two figures when the point is the same distance from each figure. All right, perpendicular bisector theorem. Um, what that means, if you have a, a point on the perpendicular bisector of a segment, then it's equidistant from the endpoints of the segment. So let's kind of draw that out just so you can see what, what that means. So um, I have a segment. We'll call that segment AB. And if I draw a perpendicular bisector, and we'll call that midpoint P, remember, from our definition of a perpendicular bisector. And what it says, well, first off, let me back up. I know that that's a 90 degree angle, and those two segments are congruent. Um, what this theorem says is that if I pick a point anywhere on this line, I'm going to pull it right here, and let's call that C, then that means that the distance from CA and the distance from CB, that these two distances are going to be the same. That's the perpendicular bisector theorem. So again, I have a perpendicular line that's intersecting a segment, that means, and I pick a point anywhere on this line, that that point is going to be the same distance to each of the endpoints. All right, now we have what's called the converse of the perpendicular bisector theorem, and it says that if a point is equidistant from the endpoints of a segment, then we know that it's on the perpendicular bisector of the segment. So let's draw this out. If I have some segment AB, and I know that I pick a point, and we'll draw it right here. Right, and I know that this distance here is the same as this distance here. Okay, so I know those two are the same. Then this, if I were to draw this down, okay, then I know that that point C is on the perpendicular bisector of the segment AB. All right, now we've got some examples. The first one says to find the distance from A to B. Uh, looking at the diagram, I notice this 90 degree angle here, and I notice these two segments are congruent, so that tells me that this line AD is the perpendicular bisector of segment BC, and because of the perpendicular bisector theorem, if the distance from A to C is 9, then that simply means that the distance from A to B is also 9 units. Right, the next example is asking us again for distance. We need to find the distance from S to U. Uh, looking at the diagram, um, I notice that I have a 90 degree angle here. And I notice that the distance from S to R is equal to the distance from T to R. So again, that's, not, that's actually the converse of the Pythagorean theorem, or not Pythagorean theorem, perpendicular bisector theorem. Uh, so that tells me that 
U is the midpoint of segment ST, which means that the distance from S to U and T to U are equal. Um, and because I have variables, that means I need an equation. Since these two segments are, the distance from these two segments are equal, that's how I'm going to set up my equation. 2x plus 2 is equal to 3x. Subtract 2x from both sides. I get 2 is equal to x, or x is equal to 2, if I switch that around. Now remember what I'm looking for, I'm looking for the distance from s to u, so I have to take this value for x, and I'm going to substitute in here. So the distance from s to u is going to be equal to 2 times the 2 for my x, plus 2. 2 times 2 is 4, plus 2 makes 6. So my answer, the distance from s to u, is going to be 6 units. Alright, now we're going to kind of review what an angle bisector is. Now remember that, that what that does is if I have a ray that kind of cuts through the angle, um, and we'll call this point, I'll call that point D. Alright, um, what it, the first thing it does is that it makes two congruent adjacent angles. Okay, so I know that if I have an angle bisector, I know that angle BAD is congruent to angle CAD. Right. Um, the other thing to remember with this that we're going to use is if I make the distance, or if I need to know the distance from D to B or the distance from D to C, that this line right here, if I want to measure that distance, that distance has to cross, or that, that segment that I just made has to be perpendicular to that ray to that side. So same thing here. This has to be a 90 degree angle. Okay. Alright. Uh, now we got the angle bisector theorem and that says if a point lies on the bisector of an angle then it is equidistant from the two sides of the angle. So basically looking at the diagram that we just had, um, here's my angle BAC. I noticed that angle AD is an angle, bi or ray AD is an angle bisector because I have the two congruent uh, tick marks here, and I notice that I have the two 90 degree angles. So what this means, what this theorem says, is that if I have this point, that the distance from D to B, that, that distance is going to equal the distance to D to C. So I know this segment is congruent to that segment. That's what the angle bisector theorem tells us. Alright, now we got the converse of the angle bisector theorem, and that says if a point is in the interior of the angle, and it is equidistant from the two sides of the angle, then I know that the that it lies on the angle bisector. So let's kind of draw this out. I have my angle BAC. I know D is in the interior of angle BAC. And if I get the distance, if I'm told that the distance from D to B is congruent to the distance from D to C, then that tells me that ray AD is an angle bisector of angle B A C. Looking at this example here, uh, they want us to find the measure of angle C A B, which is this outside angle. Um, again, looking at the diagram, I notice that I have D uh, being equidistant to C and B. Uh, so that tells me that by that the angle bisector theorem, I know that um, angle CAD is going to be congruent to angle BAD. So if this angle here is 20, that tells me that the measure of angle CAD is also 20 degrees. Okay? And since I want the outside angle, this is 20 and 20, so 20 plus 20 gives me 40. So I know that the measure of angle CAB is going to be 40 degrees. For this next example, um, it wants us to find the distance from B to D. And looking at the diagram, I notice that I have an angle bisector. Okay? And by the angle bisector theorem, that tells me that the distance from B to D has to equal the distance to C to D. Okay? And since I got variables, I have to set up an equation. 
I know these two segments are equal, so that's what I'm going to do. 3x plus 1 is equal to 5x minus 1. Okay. Um, now you can rewrite these if you have one write it as 5x minus 1 is equal to 3x plus 1. That's the same thing. So um, let's go ahead and solve it that way. I'm going to subtract the 3x uh, to both sides. 5 minus 3 gives me 2x. These cancel when I have a 1 there. I have 1 to both sides. Those cancel tells me 2x is equal to 2. I divide by 2, it tells me x is equal to 1. Okay, we've got to be careful again. I'm looking for the distance from b to d. I just found x, so that means I have to substitute. So to get the distance from b to d, I need to do 3 times 1 plus 1. And so the distance from b to d is going to be 4. I'm going to go ahead and, go ahead and call that 4 units. All right, on this on example, I, I need to find the perpendicular bisector, the equation of the perpendicular bisector of segment AB. Um, so that means a few things that I have to do. First thing I want to do is I want to find the midpoint. Of segment AB. Then I want to find the perpendicular slope. And then I want to um, find the y-intercept. And then I want to substitute into the equation y equals mx plus b to get the perpendicular bisector equation. Alright, so the first thing I want to do is I want to find the midpoint of a, b. So I'm going to look at the coordinates of A. I know A is at uh, 0, negative 2, and I know B is at uh, 2, 2. So if I want to find the midpoint, I'm going to do 0 plus 2 over 2. And it's going to be negative 2 plus 2 over 2. Right. If I do that, that 2 over 2 is going to give me 1. And then negative 2 plus 2 is 0 over 2, which is just 0. So I know my midpoint is 1, 0. Okay, the next thing we need to do is we need to find the perpendicular slope. Um, so I'm going to use AB to find the slope. Um, the slope formula tells me I'm going to take y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And this becomes 2 over 2 plus 2, which is... 2 over 4, which is 1 half. Okay, so my slope for this line is 1 half, but I want the perpendicular bisector, so that means I'm going to do the opposite reciprocal. So my perpendicular slope is going to be the opposite. So if this is positive, this perpendicular slope is going to be negative, and then I want to flip the fraction, so it's going to be 2 over 1. So my perpendicular slope is a negative 2. So now that I've got the midpoint and I've got the perpendicular slope, uh, what I want to do is I want to find my y-intercept of my new line. So that means I'm going to substitute into the y equals mx plus b. Okay. Now the point that I want to use is I want to use this one because it's a part of the line that I'm looking for. Same thing with the slope. So I'm going to substitute here. This is going to be my x, this is going to be my y, and this is my n. So I have 0 is equal to negative 2 times 1 plus b. So 0 is equal to negative 2 times 1 is negative 2 plus b. And I want to solve for b, so I'm going to add 2 to both sides. That cancels, and I'm left with 2 is equal to b. So that tells me my y-intercept is going to be 2. Now we have everything that we need. Uh, to find this perpendicular bisector equation. Um, I know that y is going to be equal to my m, which is negative 2, x, my y-intercept is 2. Okay, so that's my equation, y equals negative 2x plus 2.